Do you want to be able to 3D print buildings that you take pictures of with your drone? In today's video, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step tutorial for a lot of common drones on how to take pictures and then make a 3D model that you can then print and use for all sorts of things, maybe giving to clients. And this is also not just for buildings. This can be for anything. So this can be anything you can take a picture of with your drone, basically. So you can do this for parks. You can do this for landscapes. You can do this for mountains, buildings, etc. But for today's video, I'm going to show you specifically on how to do this for buildings. So let's go through and actually pick out a spot to 3D scan and make a model of that we're going to print. Um, I really like this community center that I have here because this community center actually has a lot of very sharp edges. So you can go through and get a really good model by flying around it. Your main limitations though, especially on some of the sides here, is that you have also some tree cover here. And really for 3D models, you kind of want to be as far away as possible so you can capture as much of the surrounding area. And also for the walls, you need to be able to take pictures of that without getting too close. So. I think if you've never done this before, we're going to use a tool called Waypoint Map. It will allow you to go through and automate and pre-plan your mission specifically for the purpose of 3D scanning. Also, when you log in, we are going to be using the advanced version if you'd like to follow along. There is an older version, and this is going to be the advanced version that's going to be shown in today's video. And since we're trying to make a model, we don't want to go too crazy here. And because we're making it of a specific building, I'm going to just walk you through some simple steps that you can do to get started. So if you're using this for the free version, um, I'm going to walk you through how to do everything for free in this video. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to generate a circle and we're going to click generate. And what this is going to do is it's basically going to generate all these different points from a pretty far distance. And then we might go a step farther and even go through and make them a little wider. Now, since we're using waypoint map, since we're using aerial model, we don't really need all these points. So we can have it generate a couple. And then I'm also going to make another wider circle here. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to fly from a farther distance around. And it's going to have by default automatically look at the center here. So you're basically going to capture this area. I'm going to include a full tutorial video um, on how to use this software because by default you're going to get sent to the old version. Um, but there is a full tutorial video on exactly how to use this. If you are really confused, um, I'm going to use the installer, which is a paid feature. If you've never done this before, there is a free way to do this. It is not that complicated. You just have to manually go through and install the file. And there is a full tutorial video on how to do that as well. If you would like to support me in making these kinds of things, then of course, feel free to purchase the premium version and then you can use the installer. So we're going to download the final file and I'm going to load up the installer and put it on my controller. And, and so I'm just going to select my KMZ file, install it, and this is, and then we'll have it installed. It will go through and connect and automatically have it ready to go. And then all we have to do when we get there is just select the mission and fly it from that. So now we are ready to go through and fly. And basically what's going to happen now is depending on what version, if you're using the free or the paid version, you'll be able to go through and the drone will automatically capture these pictures. If it doesn't, you'll have to manually go through and enable the time shots feature in the drone, but it will still go through and capture these pictures. If you do not have waypoint map or the ability to use waypoint map and waypoint map is not supported, you'll have to manually go through and kind of fly a similar pattern with these two circles, but in take pictures, but you will still be able to capture these images and make a 3D model just the same. So basically we're just gonna wait now for the drone to capture this. It is much nicer to not have to manually fly around and take the pictures, but if you, that's unavoidable for you, I'm sorry, um, that's just the drone you have. So we're gonna wait for this drone to go through and automatically fly this. I'm using my Mini 4 Pro here, but you can basically go through and have the drone just take these pictures, hands off, and then when it's done, it's done, and it's basically finished 3D scanning. So let's wait for it to finish up, and then we'll go load these pictures in another piece of software. The next piece of software we're going to be using is called Aerial Model. It will allow you to go through and upload pictures. Now, I do have the premium version, so I'm going to upload a little bit more, but there is a 25 image limit to how many pictures you can upload for free. So if you are 
not paying, that's perfectly fine. Just make sure that you go through and upload under 25 pictures. As long as you get them from all the angles, maybe a single circle, you should get pretty good coverage of your building. And then you should be able to go through and make a model from it just the same. I am going to be uploading more images for this video because I have more, but basically we're just going to now wait for this to go through and process and then get the final model so we get a really good quality result. So I'm going to wait for this to upload and process and then let's take a peek at the final results. So this is the final model that was spit out. As you can see there are a couple spots that we have some holes but that's actually not that big of an issue. Um, the main thing that we're looking for is kind of these sharp edges because those are really what's going to be important. We're going to do a little bit of post-processing next to make sure this is ready to 3D print. But as you can see, overall, we've taken those images that we've collected and made a model that now we can print from, which is really cool. Um, and we can actually yeah, throw this in a 3D printer. So as you can see, there's a lot of sharp edges. And basically the whole building is pretty much modeled out without having to go through and actually model this out in CAD, which is really good. We can also do a couple other things too, like actually get some measurements from like this building. So we can know if we're trying to make this to a certain scale, we can make it, print it, and then know exactly what kind of scale we're working on. So you know, if we measure this and this is like it was eight meters and we measure the model that we print, we can also provide that reference to customers if you're doing that or if you're just doing this for fun. So real quick, let's go over, let's download this and we're going to go into some software called Fusion 360. If you do not want to pay for the ridiculous amount because Fusion 360 is expensive for me, if you want to go through and actually use this for a personal capacity, you can and you can use it for free. So what does this mean? It means that if you're not really making any money from this, maybe you're learning, you can use Fusion just to kind of generate some projects and we're gonna use that to kind of patch up the model next. So if you have never used this before, um, you can use the free version, it will follow, you'll allow you to follow along as well without any issues as well. So the first thing that we're going to do now in Fusion, if you've never this, done this before, is import the model. So you have to go through the tab up there, click open, and then select the object file that you've downloaded. And then we're going to click on Edit Feature. And then we're going to go through and then we're going to work on slowly removing the parts that we don't want in our model. So the big thing here is some of these parts, especially like the trees here, are not really useful. So we can just select them and then hit delete. And then what that's going to do is remove those parts from our model so we can strictly focus on the building that we're trying to make our model of. If we do this of the trees themselves, they are not really, trees are especially difficult to get right from drone pictures. So it's not a reliable method. So I'm just going to rotate this model now and just make selections to kind of select the things that I don't want. Um, so these trees, for example, and also make sure I just get just the building. And then I'm also trying to line it up so it's very square. But after that, I'm just going to go through now and try to look around at different angles and highlight all of the different faces. Now, with the trees, especially why this is so much of an issue is they come out really jumbled. So you have to go through and select them from different angles. You can only select when you are looking at the face, per se of it so you just have to go through it's a little bit of a process if you rotate three or four different angles um, then at the end you should have a lot of them selected and you should be able to get rid of them so let's go through finish this up real quick and then we'll have a final model that we can preview and so once we have everything that we want here we're now going to go through and finish the model in a couple different ways so there are some defects with the building itself so what we're going to go through is try to get rid of those defects. We're going to use the inbuilt feature to finish the model and close it. So we want to get rid of any shape that doesn't really match our actual building. So there are some holes up on top of this roof here that were not present when we went through and scanned this building. Obviously this roof was flat and solid. So we're going to go through now and individually try to get rid of these guys so that basically there's nothing there instead of um, a hole or these malformed divots per se of this model and what this will, will do next is we'll go through and it will automatically fill all these in so you'll get a really smooth surface here we just want to remove any false detail so now we're going to go through and finish the model now that we have all our false detail removed so we're going to click on repair and we're going to click on basically the object and then we're going to close all the holes up 
And what this will do is it will make a single body that does not have any holes in it. And as you can see, the roof ended up getting repaired nicely and it's nice and flat. Now it doesn't have all those triangles in it, but that's okay because in reality, especially for the flat surfaces, it's actually not really noticeable, this difference. So now that we have this model, we're going to save this as an STL and we're going to load this into our slicer software. So depending on what printer you have, you will have a different type of uh, slicer, Cura, um, Creality has some, I have a Bamboo Lab printer, so that's what we're going to load it up into today. Next, the goal is to make sure that we get the model itself down far enough in the bed so it only slices what we want to print, which basically means that if we have like bushes or artifacts that we don't necessarily want, we want to make sure that the model itself is just far enough down so only the building is printed, and then that way we have just what we want Print it. Now you might need a little bit of finishing when you print the model, there might be some small pieces or something like that, but overall we have the model here and we're ready to go. So let's go through, let's print this now and then we'll see what the final result looks like. And here we go, here is the printer printing it up. Um, Honestly, I printed this rather small, but depending on how big you want and also how much time you want to spend finishing it, you can use other types of software too. MeshLab is another free one that you can use to finish the model. And once it's finished, we get this result. So this is a model of the building, which actually ends up looking very similar. Um, I might, I could have done a better job maybe pushing it up a little bit more so we get some of that wall on the small edge, but overall we get a pretty accurate and reliable model for pretty much spending very little time actually modeling it out in CAD. If you wanted to model this out in CAD, you'd have to go through fly the drone, take some reference pictures, and then spend the time to do it that way versus you can just go through now and take a subject, fly over it, take a couple pictures, and then you actually get a reliable model from it, which is actually really good. So this has a lot of applications. You can make this for clients. You can make this for your friends. You can do this for construction sites, all that kinds of stuff. So definitely consider to add this into your tool set to go through and provide to those people. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Have a great day.